Hi everybody, thanks for being here. This video is going to be a look inside my top makeup drawer. It's kind of a space that I reserve for products that I want to make a point to use. And when you've got a really big collection, I do get a lot of questions. How do you make use of everything? How do you know what you have? And first off, I think it's really important to stay well organized throughout your collection so you do know what's there. But secondly, I do think it's a really good idea to shop your stash, so to speak, and have a basket or have a drawer set aside where you can put products that maybe you had forgotten about a little bit or you just kind of want to refresh your memory on or you never did a review on them so you want to learn more. I use my drawer for those kinds of things but also certain new products that I just have recently put into the mix and I want to make sure to use those as well. So my makeup usage doesn't 100% come from this drawer over the duration of the month. I'll use things from everywhere but sometimes you know I'll be thinking what foundation am I going to use today. Oh, I'll check the drawer and see what things, you know, that I want to make a point to be able to have reviewed by the end of the month, you know. On my face today, I'm wearing all products from that drawer, so I'll make a note of all those things in the description box, as I always do. If you're ever curious, like, what lipstick or what eye product I'm wearing and I don't mention it in the video, it's always listed um, below in the description box. But let's take a look inside. Okay, here we are. Here's my drawer. Um, you're probably seeing a lot of these clear dividers. These are really great trays for these long shallow drawers and I've gotten many of those from places like TJ Maxx or Ross. I believe I also came up with a few of those at Target too but I'm going to start over here with some face products and this Smashbox primer oil has lived in this drawer before um, but now I kind of want to use it with a different purpose. I want to try mixing this with some more things. I've seen some little video clips showing that being mixed in with different concealers and foundations not just straight using it as a priming face oil. So I'm excited to try that. Also, I recently got my hands on this um, L'Oreal Sublime Bronze Wash Off Face Bronzer Cream. Um, I've had a product kind of like this before and I really liked it, so I thought I could either use this alone, like a cream bronzer, or I could mix it in with foundations. A couple of concealers that I just haven't been using a lot of lately, I've got my MAC Pro Longwear there and then this NYX Gotcha Covered which reminds me a lot of the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. It's a very, very creamy, thick, like a lot of dewy texture to that concealer, but um, I just hadn't used it a whole lot, so I want to make sure to use it now. And then here, if I can turn them so you can see, I've got several foundations that I really want to, like, by the end of this month have come to a conclusion on. So I've got the Clinique um, Beyond Perfecting Foundation and Concealer, the Boots Number no. 7 Stay Perfect, Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation, and a couple of more lightweight things, this new CoverGirl Matte Clean BB and the Burst Bees BB. So that's my goal is to really, you know, figure these out. I've been wearing them a decent amount, but like with the Charlotte Tilbury, it's the claims are so high for that product. I just can't decide if it's magical for me. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Is it that great? I don't know. Over here I've got some blush, bronzer, highlight type things. This is from e.l.f. Um, I had talked about in a haul video these Aqua Beauty blushes and bronzers. They're a little different texture than the old blush bronzer duos, which were just straight up powders. These are kind of like a little bit of a cream powder hybrid in here. This one that I'm wearing today is called Bronzed Peach, and then there are some more pinky options too. I pulled out my Balm Desert, which I absolutely loved this product and it just kind of got off the radar a little bit. But this is really cool as a bronzer, but also a really pretty, like, neutral blush. I've loved using that as blush. Too Faced has their candlelight glow, and more recently they came out with the warm glow version, which is a little more goldeny peachy instead of having, like, um, the pinky shade over there on the right. So I got this out, the warm glow, to use. Makeup Revolution Vivid Baked Bronzer. Um, shade is called Golden Days, and it seems to be a very, very, very subtle, kind of like um, all over bronzy highlight type product. So I'm going to try that. And this thing, this was such a hidden gem that I hadn't been using. It's from City Color, Timeless Beauty, it says, and it's like four 
sort of highlight slash bronzer type products, but really interesting tones. You can see one's more rosy, one's a little bit more of a deeper brownish bronze. You've got kind of a traditional bronze and then an actual golden color that I highlighted with today. So the textures on these are divine. Very creamy, very soft, so I'm excited to get use out of that. Now I've got three loose powders floating around in here. I've got this one from Clinique, the Invisible Blend. I've got the Estee Lauder Double Wear Mineral Loose powder and this Fiona Styles loose powder as well. So I'm going to be kind of comparing these, um, comparing coverage levels, trying different ones for baking here or there, although not every shade will be ideal for that, but I just uh, am kind of into loose powders these days. I've got this Hard Candy Brow Ink, which you've maybe heard me talk about before. It's got a teeny tiny brush and it's just like a tinted brow gel, but it's not very goopy at all. It's just a very fine brush and I have had talked about how much I enjoyed it, but I just hadn't used it much. So now this drawer is really the ideal place for a product like that. want to make sure I use it. It's really good stuff. And then you see here, I had gotten a bunch of these double-ended pencils from e.l.f. Um, basically, they've come out with their own version of nude sticks is what it seems to be. So they've got lip pencils. You might see some darker ones on there like eyeliner, eyeshadow pencils, brightener type pencils. And I really want to use those, try them out. Um, compare them to any of the nude sticks that I have. See if they're creamy enough to realistically use like as blushes or cheap products or all the multitasking ability they claim to have. Some sort of smallish individual eye products. I had gotten this trio from Alme, which I thought looked really interesting. The color payoff on this, I'm wearing it today. It's not really what I hoped it would be. I mean, I don't see the purple or the gold really standing out as much as I would have liked. But it's one of those products, the texture seems actually kind of decent, so I'm willing to work with it. A few other things. Remember that uh, Too Faced Vegas Nay Stardust palette? It came with like a really loose shimmery eyeshadow and I thought that might be fun to work into some looks because I really hadn't used that very much. Um, I've got a great gorgeous single here from Kat Von D. This is called uh, Iggy is the shade name. It's a very pigmented shimmery metallic emerald green and I've just kind of got a vision in my head for how I want to use that so I've pulled that aside. Got this random Maybelline single in Earthly Taupe. File this away under products I purchased but barely used so that might be a nice kind of crease or blended out color. And then a couple of these pretty NYX prismatic eyeshadows. These are gorgeous when it comes to shiny, shimmery, metallic finish shades. The lighter one is called Golden Peach and that dark green is called Jaded. I've got several ColourPop highlights pulled in here because I just have a really hard time remembering to use these. Um, this light white pearly one is called Fanny Pack. Then this one is called Lunch Money, I believe. Yeah, this one kind of reminds me of Mary Luminizer from The Balm. And then I have a more bronzy one. This is called Butterfly Beach. And the texture on these is just fantastic. Really, really soft. Um, they go on nice with your fingers. You could use like a stipple brush or any kind of brush you like to use with creams because these are kind of that cream powder mix. My Wet n Wild Contouring Palette, Caramel Toffee. Fabulous contouring product. Really affordable. Very simple. I need to be using that more. And then I've got this NYX Ultimate Palette. They are the Warm Neutrals variety of finishes. I think summertime would be a great time to get use out of this palette. I also have recently discovered a cool um, Pacifica palette, kind of that all-in-one palette with the highlights and blush and eyeshadow. Really enjoyed that and wanted to try more eyeshadow, so I got this Natural Minerals eyeshadow palette. Love purple and gold. Um, I really think purple and gold look pretty together. Also, purple and peach, and all of those combos are available in this palette. These are really exceptionally soft, lightweight eyeshadows, so I'm pumped to use that. I've also been fortunate to have been gifted some really cool makeup items, and these are from Lisa J, and she sent me some great products from Cryolon, which is a um, like a professional makeup brand. I know a lot of makeup artists are very familiar with that, and there's this all matte palette, and then this one that has some shimmer as as well. And I've really enjoyed these. These are nice quality, very smooth eyeshadows. This one is called Cool 
Kuwait City. This one is musket, this all matte. So I haven't used the all matte yet, but I've put these in my drawer, so I will definitely remember to do that. And then my girl Erica Jones here on YouTube sent me this cool palette. This, I believe, is by Makeup Revolution, and it's called Chocolate Vice. I think it is Makeup Revolution's take on Sweet Peach. So, yeah, behold the similarities. Um, if you're familiar with the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette, I am pumped to dig into this. There are some gorgeous looking colors in here. Lastly in here as far as lip products, I had gotten this lip scrub. Um, I got it off of Beautylish. It's one of the Jeffree Star lip scrub, lip scrubs. <laughs> lip scrub, it's the uh, root beer scent and it is just one of those sugar scrubs. It feels like there's a ton of product in here and I am just always more prone these days to reaching for one of my e.l.f. exfoliating lip scrub sticks. So this is a little more trouble you know you got to dip your finger into the stuff and mush it around on your lips but it does smell fantastic so I want to make sure I use that. I've got a few newer shades of the, uh, the Balm Meat Matte Hues which is their liquid lipsticks and I think these are some of the better liquid lipsticks on the market and this shade is actually the one I'm wearing today it's called Doting and it's a pretty peach color. I don't think they're overly drying and they smell exactly like Thin Mint Girl Scout cookies so added bonus. I've got a few MAC lip products including this Huggable Glass. This is in the shade Sweet Persuasion. It's a nice creamy nude. Um, I think it would be good layered on top of different nude lip looks so I want to set that aside. And a couple of MAC lipsticks. That's Whirl on the left which is a matte and lickable from the Cream Sheen line which is a really gorgeous brighter pink. Um, that one's a little bit more new to me and I think it's just a great summertime shade so I don't want to miss out using it this time of year. A perfect summer lip gloss shade. This is a buxom lip cream in the shade Cherry Flip and it's the lip creams are more opaque than their glosses or their lip polishes I think they're called and I had gotten a big set of these around the holidays so this shade I remembered thinking gosh that is a great summer kind of watermelony type red so I want to use this. Also these products from e.l.f. Um, I think these might have been called like Gotta Glow Lip Tints or am I pulling that name out of thin air? I'm not sure um, but this is like called Perfect Berry and then Perfect Peach and I have one that's like um, it looks almost transparent but it's a pink and it's kind of like the idea of the It Cosmetics Vitality Lip Flush and Je Ne Sais Quoi and these products go on feeling like lip balms but they do stain and they don't stain exactly like the colors you see in the tubes like that looks like a really dark purple and that looks like a bright orange it will be more like a light berry stain and a soft peach looking stain but I've barely used these so far and I really want to try them out more. Lastly, um, the brand Glossier is something I have enjoyed for their rose water mist. They've got some cool skincare products here and there and they're doing it seems like a few more makeup type items because I've got a concealer, a brow product, and like kind of a tinted lip balm type product here. It's called Stretch Concealer. I've got that in the shade medium 20. Boy Brow is like a tinted brow gel type product. I've got that in brown and then this lip product in jam, which I said tinted lip balm. It's got a little more color to it than that, um, but it's a nice deep berry shade. Also, talk about an old and underused product. This is a heated lash curler from Japanesque. And has anyone tried a lash curler like this and how did it work? I got it. I may have used it a couple times. I don't even remember what my experience was like. Like, it's been years. So I am really pumped to give this a go again. I have forgotten I even had it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that was interesting and um, these are definitely some products you can expect to see in upcoming tutorials and reviews. So thanks for your time and I'll see you later. Bye.